Alright everyone, how's it going? Fem52 back again. And in today's episode, we're going to be going over the creature capture. Let's get going. Alright everyone, how's it going? Uh, so in this episode, like I said, we're going to be going over the, uh, the creature capture monster things. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be doing this for every chapter. Uh, because it's going to be a long time, or not a long time, but it's going to be a pretty long video, at least here for chapter one, and uh, I don't know if anybody's going to want this video, um, but for now, at the very least, I'm going to go ahead and do this, and uh, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be going through uh, the creature creator, and uh, going through uh, the creature, not the creature history, that is not what I want to do. I'm going to be going through the bestiary and basically going uh, down the list of where each uh, fiend is found and uh, just going through their little creature history with you and showing off the video. Um, so if that is not something that you are going to want to watch, go ahead and skip on to... It should be episode 2. I'm actually recording this uh, before I finish off chapter 1. Like I'm just about to go to Besaid uh, when I honestly had the brainwave to do this uh, so if I'm able to put this into where I want to put it into uh, this should be showing up in between episodes 1 and 2 so if this isn't your type of episode if you don't care about the creature creator just go ahead and skip on to episode 2 I should be uploading that roughly the same time this one is getting uploaded uh, but yeah for those of you that want to stick around let's go ahead and head on through the list Alright, so the first area we are going to be going through is going to be Besaid, and the first creature for Besaid is going to be the Coyote, uh, which is going to be a small creature, and if you're using the SP spheres, uh, that is going to be the wolf type creature. And the Coyote right here, yada 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 yada. Sigh, I wonder where my dear Reginald is now. Oh, Reginald is my pet dog, found him crying his heart out one rainy night. Uh, the little guy's always bounced by my... Wait, the little guy always bounced to my side when I called his name. Had a heart of gold, he did. When I was a little boy, we found... Or we would go everywhere together. Uh, he'd rush to my side when I came back from temple school. Even when I fell ill and couldn't get out of bed, he never once left my side. Now I apologize... Or when I apologize for not being able to take him on his walks, he licked my face as if he understood every word. Someone else has taken Reginald in now. I'm glad he found someone in or someone to love him after I passed on. I hope his new owner treats him well. His happiness would mean the world to me. Do I want to see him? That goes without saying. But look at me now. He would barely recognize me. What cruel tricks fate can play. Someone's, something's been gnawing at me. I can't go to the far plane. Not like this. Even if Reginald forgot me, I want to lay eyes on him one last time. Alright guys, so that was the Coyote. Now, I'm not going to be uh, reading through the actual 
fiend tail movie thing uh, purely because I cannot read, register, and then speak fast enough to actually get through that in time without messing up immensely. Um, so I'll go ahead and let those play on screen, but I will not be reading them. Uh, next up though for Besaid is going to be the Flan Azul, this guy right here. And of course he's going to be a small and the SP uh, requirement is going to be a uh, Flan. So let's go ahead and hop on into this guy. That sounded wrong, but you know what I mean. Have you by any chance seen my master? It has been two years since I lost sight of him. I exist only to serve my master. I must find him. Between a lush, mystical forest and a river where glowing flowers bloom. Oh, that was where the small village was. The village where I lived with my master. But one day my master disappeared. Of course we searched day and night for him. But ultimately, we were not able to find him. My master was our savior. There has always been a rift between our kind and humans. The master showed us a way out. The master became our leader and put us on the correct path. I will return this world to its original form. You must help me accomplish this. The master would always say this while looking on with somber eyes. Another fiend has informed me that my master has long since departed to the far plane. Uh, with the master gone, I have no reason to remain in Spira. Shinra, I must ask a favor of you. Could you take me to the Makalania Woods? I wish to return to the place where I first met the master. Interesting. So it looks like uh, Flan Azul's uh, former master was actually uh, Lord Seymour. Interesting, interesting. Anyway, the next fiend that we're going to be looking for, if I can find him, 
they're his. It's going to be the uh, the Sahagan, Sahagan, however you want to pronounce that. Uh, and he is going to be a small creature in Bavel, uh under the Dino Fish category. I had figured myself for dead. Thanks for rescuing me. I was just about to, to drown too. I was getting too exhausted. I should have thought twice before setting off to swim all the way around Spira. Maybe you can't tell, but I'm an adventurer. I've enjoyed traveling ever since I was a human. I've climbed the tallest, the tallest peaks of Gagazet, braved the deserts of Bikinel, and more. No matter what the danger, never once have I thought of abandoning this life. Why would you ask? I've, uh, I've never thought much about why. It's just part, part and parcel of being an adventurer. Recently, I thought to swim all the way around Spira. I was trying to do that when you saved me. But I won't give up. Sure, it's easier by boat or airship, but how could I put this? I, you could say, I feel I've changed a lot through these adventures. I've not just become more experienced. Uh, what I mean is that something has changed inside of me, fundamentally. It's hard to explain, but it's important to me. I can't quite put my finger on it, but that's the reason. adventurous little fish that apparently somehow almost drowned. Anyway, our next fiend is going to be the Solet. If I can find him. There he is. And he's going to be a small helm creature in Bevel. Well, not Bevel, in Besaid, I should say. Lady Yuda, to imagine that one such as I could ever accompany you on your journeys. There could be no greater joy for a monk of Yevon to feel. Since the time of Yokon, I have desired to fulfill my dreams of guarding the great summoners. Ah, I went too far. And now I can't go back. Darn it. Let's try this again, shall we? Guarding the great summoners. Uh, but never did I believe that I would see my dreams come true in this monstrous form. Biding my time in this shell was the right move after all. Old though I may be, I swear to you, I shall train day and night to become a worthy protector. Uh, 
Quite a strain on this old man, but I'll be fine, lady. I swore to be your guardian. I won't let something like this strike me down. I will stand strong until we arrive safely at Xanarkand. Uh, leave everything to me, Lady Yuna. I shall protect you. Still, the shaking of this ship does cause me consternation. Are the storms of sin closing in on us? What's this now? The ship is powered by Machina. Lady Yuna, what a horrible joke! Yevon's teachings state that Machina are, for are forbidden. Please don't tease an old man. Are you to say sin no longer terrorizes us? That the calm will last for uh, for time eternal? Uh, what tall tales you would have me believe? It's not. I'm not as senile as you may think, Lady Yuna. And you tell me peace reigns throughout the land? And that you're no longer a summoner, but a sphere hunter? So the ship has been overcome by the foul taint of sin. Forgive me, Lady Yuna, for failing you. No, I must not give up. We must make haste to Zanarkin, to Lady Yunaleska. Then Lady Yuna will see the truth. Alright, so at least we were able to give that old man uh, some peace there in the end. Uh, but our next creature that we're going to be going after is actually going to be the Coral here. Uh, which is going to be a medium uh, Chimera type enemy. Why Chimera? No idea, but there you go. This is top secret information. I am a man who used to be a world-renowned thief, but I made a gaffe while pulling the final big heist of my career, and poof, I became a fiend. This is top secret information part two. I died when I fell off the roof of a house I was sneaking into, but it wasn't just any old fall. I mean, certainly it was a huge job, but oops, I'll tell you the rest another time. Ah, so you want to hear the rest of my story, huh? The reason I messed up the heist was because something amazing caught my eye. As I was gliding across the roof, a lady in the next house over was, uh, doing something. You know, she was changing. A great thief can't pass up a chance to see something like that. So I lean over the edge to get closer, or to get a closer look, I slip and poof, I'm at the far plane entrance. So I made it to the far plane just fine, but I thought to myself, is this really how I want to go out? I'm a world-renowned thief. Becoming a fiend won't slow me down a bit. Now back to business.
So uh, that uh, Coral has done messed up. Uh, hopefully he has learned his lesson. Uh, next up is going to be the Iron Giant here, which is going to be a medium creature in Besave. And you can capture this guy with either Ogre or Iron Giant on your SP pods. And I am not going to be able to read that. That is a random string of various characters. Shinra analysis. Never heard a language like this before. Shinra analysis. I'm sorry to make something out. Shinra analysis. It seems to be repeating itself. Friends. Shinra analysis. Nope, not understanding it at all. And unlocking the Iron Giant also unlocks him as a uh, fiend in the monster arena. Uh, next up, we are looking for the plant that's in the save. Come on, there he is. Uh, the per the purpuria, however you want to say that. Uh, he's going to be a medium plant type fiend, or I guess technically she, it. I probably want to say it. I uh, want to get back my memories. I vaguely recall something red and something sad. Uh, the red of the sun as I as it sets on the horizon. Uh, what happened to me in, a pre in my previous lives? How did I end up becoming a fiend? That's right. I was a gorgeous rose growing in the garden of a mansion along the Meehan High Road. A kind old couple lived there and between them and their maid I was well taken care of. But one day, all that was stolen from me. Someone killed that lovely couple and set everything ablaze. No one else might remember that grand mansion, but I do. The red of the sun, the red of the fire, and that faint smell of perfume. That's right, before the couple was killed, I remember smelling the same per uh, that same perfume. Someone was arguing with the couple. I remember now, the couple had enormous assets, and someone was after their inheritance money. Was it a young woman? Why, I can't remember.
Alright, so how exactly a rose became a fiend, I have no idea. But, at the very least, at least we were able to help the rose find some comfort. Now, uh, next up is going to be a large creep tree. Whoa. It's going to be a large creature in uh, Besaid. Uh, but the flame dragon himself does not actually have a faith fragment. And uh, viewing his ending is basically uh, just going to show uh, the summoning of uh, Dark Ifrit again. So, for whatever reason, if you haven't seen this or you are unaware of it, here you go. This is how you unlock Dark Ifrit for the uh, for the team arena. Yeah. Alright, and the last creature that it is possible to catch in Besaid in Chapter 1 is actually Lulu. Uh, but you need to be in New Game Plus to do that. And uh, the only way you can capture her is by using an SP Sphere, and uh, or Trap Sphere, Trap Pod, whatever you want to call it. And uh, setting it to Human and setting it in Besaid. Uh, but because we are not in New Game Plus, there's no way I can capture her. Alright, so up next is going to be Kilika, and Kilika only has uh, three fiends in it. And the first one is going to be uh, the Death Dabber here, uh, which is going to be a small bee creature. I want to grow stronger, become more powerful. I'm tired of being treated like a wimp. Sometimes I can't even stand to look at myself. I've gone through life running. When I look at myself, I see a weakling, a puny creature, feared by none. Like when I was human, I was a runt then too. If I was fated to turn into a fiend, I wish I could have been something big. Like an iron giant slicing my way through the wind with my bare shoulders. But I tried to adapt. Truly I did. Even a small fiend can beat a big one if it's quick enough, right? So I trained hard, but something didn't feel right. That wasn't the kind of power I wanted. What I wanted was the power to not have to bow down to anyone. I think I get it now. I thought I wanted to be stronger, more powerful. But all this time, what I was missing wasn't strength. It was courage. Courage to face the world. Alright, so it looks like we helped the uh, the Death Dauber uh, kind of succeed on his little suicide mission, and 
That kid watching then went on his own little suicide mission. I wonder how the kid did. Anyway, our next fiend is going to be the Red Elemental, which is going to be a small elemental type fiend in Kilika. Come on, there you are. And uh, this is actually the fiend that I am going to be using uh, for quite a long time. Uh, definitely the rest of Chapter 1 and the majority of Chapter 2. Uh, we'll see how long I keep him in, uh, in the rest of the game. Well, let's go ahead and uh, read his story, shall we? I once served the great leader of the Guado, Jeskal. Uh, do you know what became of the Guado afterward? Guado Salam is now under the influence of Sphere Hunters. No side of the Guado remain. They've even occupied the leader's home. What could have happened to the Guado? I see, so it was young Master Seymour who... Oh, the horror of it all. In hindsight, perhaps, the Guado have been cursed ever since that day. Ever since I escorted young Maester Seymour uh, to the Queen Mother of Baj. Uh, Maester Jiskel had given me orders to serve as the young uh, Maester's nanny. Mixing blood with humans is quite a taboo amongst the Guado. Uh, the persecution of Maester Seymour and the Queen Mother, who was human, was something not even Maester Jiskel could stop. By exil exiling them to Baj, he was able to keep the peace. That stormy night, we were sent off to sea, in secret, with only a handful of guards. Maester Jiskel was not there to see us off. The Queen Mother gazing toward Guado Salam, with the young Maester clutched to her chest, is a sight I will never forget. After escorting the two to Baj Temple, we set sail back to Guadalajara. However, just as we were about to arrive, we were attacked by Sin, and our ship was sunk. I was swallowed up into the ocean, yet was not sent to the far plane. When I came to, I saw that I had been turned into a fiend instead. I, won I wandered through Svira and finally found my way back to Guadalajara. I must report to Maester Jiskel, please. Let me into the mansion. Or into his mansion. So it appears like that uh, red elemental when she was a 
Guano female used to be married to Trommel. How interesting. Anyway, our next creature is going to be a large creature in uh, Kilika Forest. And it is going to be the Stalwart here. I must be cool, or it must be cool being a sphere hunter. I want to travel around uh, Spira looking for spheres too. I gotta go find a sphere hunter group that'll be just right for me. Oh, the Gull Wings, but you're a leader. I'm not sure if I could keep up with that vibe. Have I got a horror story for you? So I joined the LeBlanc Syndicate in Guadalajara. Talk about overwork, plus the uniforms don't fit and the pay is terrible. I had to quit. I joined a sortie with the Kindergartians. I thought they were playing around, but it was really uh, quite fun. But seriously, rules like spend only 300 gil on snacks and they all go home so early in the evening. I found the perfect group for me, the Lightning Brigade. Uh, What's with the smirk? Don't you, th don't you th know about the greatness of the brigade? Leader Komi, age unknown, former janitor at Luca Stadium, shrouded in mystery. Treasure, or treasurer, uh, Sakai, 75 years old, former crusader, good at memory games. Uh, secretary Chin, 72 years old, former Yevon monk, serves as conscious of the group. What, you don't understand what makes them great? Well, they may be getting on in years, but I see a bright future for them. Besides, I used to love hanging around with my grandpa when I was a kid. Alright, and doing that, uh, Stalwart enters into the into the battle arena under, uh, I believe, Brigade Newcomer. And next up is going to be the Chocobo, uh, which is going to be found in the Meehan High Road uh, with a small sphere or small trap pod. Uh, no special trap pod is going to be able to capture the Chocobo for you, uh, so be aware of that. And in, out, what's that called? Taking a deep breath. Breathing in the autumn air of the calm lands makes my body feel so light. I feel like I could run forever. Just watch me. Hey, did you know spring is when the moon flow is at the most beautiful? 
uh, during spring is when the moon lilies blossom and when you can see the most fireflies. Lovers gather, gather by the banks. It's mating season for shoe puffs and Hypello too. Me too, of course. I'm going to find a nice boy and walk along the moon flow holding hands. Hey, have you heard that the sound of the waves at dusk at Pisces white beaches? The sea is painted red and the waves get so quiet. I watched for a long time, uh, sad that the day was over. I guess that's about it for summer memories. Winter I don't like very much because I can't go anywhere. I think about next spring when the new year arrives, uh, I'll make many more memories. Hey, don't forget about me, okay? Always, always remember me! Chocobo's making memories while her uh, parents are remembering her for who she was before the, her death. Anyway, up next in uh, me and High Road is going to be the Dive Beak, which is going to be a small bird. Think of me as a delivery service. I deliver all manner of things, but just for fiends, not humans. Man, I hate me some humans. Fiends and humans will never get along. There, I got an order from an Iron Giant. Wants me to, to deliver a pillow to an Ocho on Mushroom Rock Road. But I've never seen a pillow, seen such a huge pillow in my life. I dropped it along the way, but the first Chocobo Rancher helped me out. Or but his... Whoa. Let's try that again. I dropped it along the way, but this fat Chocobo Rancher helped me out. Quite helpful for a human. For his sake, I hope the chocobos don't take a bite out of him. I had a special delivery today. A Machina and Meehan High Road needed a data chip delivered to Beaconel. Accepting orders from a machine, times sure have changed, but work is work, as the saying goes. Thing was on the verge of a breakdown, but he kept begging and begging, so I decided to help him out. I went to the desert to, to, deliver, to, to deliver the chip, You'll never guess what happened. The Outbed girl who received the package was worried about the thing like it was her own child. Go figure. I'm not up to today's delivery. A Coral from Jose needs me to deliver a gift to his grandson. Problem is, the grandson is still human. I blew him off at first, but he, he started bawling like a little girl. The old Coral could barely move, so I just gave in and said yes. Flew the skies just like a firefly I did. When I delivered, or rather dumped, the gift off, the kid was what the kid started crying his eyes out. You suppose being a crybaby is genetic. Believe me, this is the first and last time I deal with humans.
Well, I guess that explains why fiends always seem to have items on them. They're just all delivery men that we have uh, kept from being able to do their jobs. Anyway, our next uh, fiend is going to be the Flan Calido right here. I know I'm probably mispronouncing that, and I'm sorry. Uh, back when I was human, I was real. I was real good for nothing. Uh, just a weak, spineless, half-baked shell of a man who didn't even have the guts to be a real outlaw or villain. But somehow, even a guy like me had someone who loved him, who loved me. She was a gentle, well-to-do lady. I still can't figure out why she fell for a guy like me. But she told me she did, and it made me so happy, you know? So I decided I'd try to become a new man for her. I mean, a classy lady like her doesn't deserve to be with some two-bit thug, right? But her parents objected, of course. Can't really say I blame them. I mean, our dates were always in Killica Woods because it was free, and I could never buy her any presents. She said she didn't care about such things, but I was embarrassed that I was never able to do anything for her. So I decided I would work hard, uh, legit, so I could buy my girl a ring. An engagement ring, that is. That's right, I decided to propose to her. I did, I did buy a ring, but in the end, I just couldn't afford a nice expensive one. Even so, I was determined to propose to her. Even if she, even if she were to reject me, I had to let her know how I felt, or so I thought. We had planned to meet in the woods as always, but as the moment drew near, I lost my nerve. I ran off before she even got there, leaving the ring behind in the ruins. Once a coward, always a coward, I guess, but I wish I had one more chance to do things over.
Alright, not really sure how that's gonna work. Old lady is going to be dating a ghost for the time being. Uh, not really going to take that much further than that, but yeah, that sounds interesting. Anyway, our next uh, fiend is going to be the Evil Eye, which is gonna be a small Evil Eye creature in the Killica Woods, or not Killica Woods, you know, on the Meehan High Road. Uh, my grandmother used to scare me with her tales. If you don't behave, you'll turn into a fiend. To think that she was right. Now what am I supposed to do? But she also used to say, you'll be made into something that reflects your sins. And that's why I look like this and that's why I look like this now? What's with the bat wings and the big eye? I look so ugly, no girl would even give me a second glance. Don't you think this is a little much? I mean, I didn't think I did that many bad things. You want to know just what I did? Uh, nothing you should worry yourself about. Just, you know, guy stuff. Hang on. With these wings, I can fly anywhere. And this eye lets me see so clearly. Go wings. I think I've gotten back my will to live. Hee 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 hee. Alright, so it looks like the pervy evil eye uh, has learned his lesson on who not to uh, watch. Uh, but anyway, so our next fiend is going to be the Proto Chimera here. And uh, my notes say that you could use a small or a medium uh, sphere to capture this guy. Um, 
Or you could use the uh, the SP sphere that uh, and set it to Chimera to get a hold of him. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's a medium creature, so I don't know why my notes would say you could use a small, but they do, so I want to at least extend that information to you guys. But anyway, I had two children. My uh, son graduated top of his class from Yevna Cavani and became a monk at Jose. I was so proud of him, but he hasn't returned home at all. He must have been so busy, but I would have been happy to even get a letter. My dear boy, your mother misses you. My daughter must have felt she was always being measured against her brother. Uh, she became quite rebellious. After a while, she wouldn't even speak to me, and one day, she left home. She is actually a gentle, sweet girl. It broke my heart to see her so unhappy. It's your mother's fault that things turned out this way. I'm so sorry. I lost the will to live and fell gravely ill. I figured it would have been... Or I would have... I figured I would be sent to the far plane when my time came. I woke up and found myself the way you see me now. For a while, I was inconsolable. But I've realized recently that there are good things about becoming a fiend. Jose was attacked by sin just as I drew my last breath. Not only my son who was not only my son who was working at the temple, but also my daughter was in Jose at the time. All of our lives ended at the same time. I cursed the cruelty of sin. But then a miracle happened. Well, I guess uh, sin not only destroyed families, but brought them back together as well. Um, and completing the Proto Chimera will also unlock the Proto Chimera for the Fiend Arena. And next up, we have the Quadricorn, which again, my notes say you can use small or medium uh, or an SP pod. And I'm not really sure how to pronounce the name of this creature, but. Um, looks like Ruminok to me. Uh, so if you're using the SP sphere, uh, just look for the dual horn type looking picture. Anyway, uh, do you have someone you can call You can call a rival? You know, someone who you're not friendly with and really annoyed by, but someone important to your life, uh, nonetheless a worthy opponent. Uh, you don't realize how, valu how valuable they are uh, to you until they're gone. I myself have felt this void in my life for a long time now. I was a blitzball player. Uh, this may sound a bit immodest, but I was the star player. My technique was flawless, and never once did I lose. Until that fateful day when I met my rival. My world changed after I met him. The supreme confidence I once held was shattered. I didn't want to lose, I had to see which one of us was worthy of being called a star. But he didn't have the time for that, he had a monumental journey to undertake. Still, I requested a match, that was the first and last time we competed. 
Our match ended with no clear victor. I was obviously dissatisfied. I told him as much and he replied that we could have a rematch once he returned from his journey. And then we could see boy. And then we could see our calm season come to fruition, he said. You better not have forgotten, O'Holland. I've still got you in my sights. Interesting, interesting. How that quadricorn ended up getting in a temple, I have no idea. But at least he was able to hear the voice of the dead and uh, come to reason and come to terms with his death. Anyway, our next fiend that we're going to be looking for is going to be the wild wolf. Which is going to be right here. Uh, which is going to be a small wolf creature on the high road. I mean, go figure. Um, I can't read, uh, what's it called? I'll bed yet, so all I see here is up and Beaconel. Nothing there. Home. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nope. Nada. Nope. Negative. Nothing. 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 And Beaconel. Interesting. And. Thank <laughs> you. 
I have no idea what was just said in any of that because I was all out bad. I'll probably have to end up coming back to that uh, later in Chapter 5 once we have completed uh, the Albed language. But anyway, our next creature is going to be a large creature on the high road, uh, which is going to be the Shantek. I'm a Shantek, but I'm bad at flying. Whenever I try to ride the wind, I hear terrible sounds and people shouting. Then everything goes red and I get all dizzy. Who was I in a past life? I finally remembered my past life. I was an Albed engineer who dreamed of sailing the skies. It was my team that built the first working hover in Sphera. Nowadays, however, have been improved so much that they pretty much fly with ease, but back then it was endless trial and error with a clunky prototype made from scrap parts. I remember that first day that it sustained flight, we were all hugging each other. But all our hard work was about to, but all our hard work was about to pay off as we came to the presentation of the prototype. It was, I was the test pilot. The specs, my pilot skills, everything was supposed to be perfect. But there was engine trouble and the hover caught on fire. I didn't make it. The news of our prototype failure spread and hovers became known as dangerous vehicles. And with that, our hover project was shelved indefinitely. The disappointment of not being able to fly changed me and the prototype into a fiend. But look at these hovers whizzing around now. They're the safest vehicles in Spira. Our experiment may have failed, but it wasn't all for nothing, right? Come on, let's fly. I have a hundred years of regret to lose. So uh, we were able to help that old Albed uh, finally take to the air. Really the one time I go this way and it would have been faster to go the way I've been going. Anyway, our next creature is going to be the Bully Cap here, which is going to be our first creature from the Mushroom Rock, uh, which is going to require a small sphere or a Mushroom SP sphere. Are you familiar with the Youth League headquarters? When I was human, I oversaw its construction. That building was a dream that our leader, Nuge, and I shared. When the plans to build the Youth League headquarters first came up, Nuge and I decided that building sites should be where Operation Meehan took place. Uh, then we had the idea to use the Machina gun destroyed in the battle with Sin as a League symbol. A symbol of a new start for the Crusaders who were nearly annihilated on that fateful day. It was also to be a memorial to honor the souls of our fallen comrades. When the construction plans were finalized, Crusaders that were scattered across Bira flocked to the site. They had all lost so much and they all uh, carried painful memories within their hearts. 
but they would not avert their eyes from the past. They would draw strength from it to start anew. Construction began at a fevered pitch. It was Nuge's ideal and the beginning of this foundation. Uh, that united the Crusaders as one again. After Nuge appointed me leader of the construction project, I worked tirelessly day and night. But in the midst of construction, an accident would take my life. My regret for not overseeing the project to the end is what binds my soul to Spira in this form. Now I yearned to bring forth a, or how I yearned to bring forth a new age with our leader in that place. But I cannot allow my soul to linger in Spira forever. I shall go see the dream that we built one last time and then be on my way. Alright, so that mushroom uh, it very much wants the future of Spirit to be a good one. Uh, next up though is going to be the Tonberry, which again is going to be a small creature on the mushroom rock. And uh, for the time being, my main damage dealer in uh, my party. Uh, but we are probably going to be getting rid of this guy uh, pretty early into chapter 2. Uh, for a fiend that we can only capture in chapter 2 or in chapter 2 but anyway uh, you guys are like doing a lot of research on this on us right like we don't know that your scientists have been trying to learn more about us please but really in the end you've learned nothing about the secrets of Tomberry life I guess it can't be helped we live so far underground this is a good opportunity for me to tell you more about us. You're interested, right? Our kind all get along and we never fight. Uh, we're very peaceful despite being fiends. I mean, just look at our face. Don't we look uh, serene? We don't look too deeply, or we don't think too deeply about things. We don't sit around worrying very much. We forget bad things the next day like it never happened. Don't you think that's a positive approach? We do things at our own pace. We're not competitive. We just want to have fun and laugh all day. We're good at making other, others laugh. We can do both fool. What? We can do both fool and s straight man. Every day is a riot. I, that must be a translation thing right there. We have karma and chef's knife. So other fiends are pretty wary of us. So we're never in much danger. Don't you envy us? Although our average lifespan is shorter than other fiends. Go figure. Yeah ha 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 ha.
Not gonna lie, that told us next to nothing about the Tom Mary. Uh, let's go this way. Uh, our next uh, fiend that we can capture in uh, in Mushroom Rock doesn't actually have a story and isn't actually May a the fiend. best warrior win. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a guy bull right here who has no fiend tail, so there's nothing for me to show. Uh, but in order to capture him, you need to uh, lay down an SP trap pod uh, for human. Next up is going to be Jose, and uh, our first fiend here is going to be the the Agama, which is going to be a small reptile type creature. Want to see me do an impersonation? Let's see if I can whip up something special for you. What do you think? It's the uh, faraway cries of a wolf. Uh, when it comes to impersonating beasts of the forest, I'm number one. The cry of an ocho. Ha! I bet you think they make they make no sounds, don't you? But they do, late at night, when hunger overcomes them. They cry out. It goes like this. What do you think? What's this? You've never heard it, so you can't tell? What a downer. Shinra analysis. I wish it would just shut up for a while. Hey now, don't go knocking my talents. Impersonation can be very useful, you know? The other day, I was attacked by a drake, and I pretended to be a stalwart. It ran off like a little mouse. Lately, I've been thinking it might be good to make money off of humans with my impersonations. Maybe I'll test my material out with Luca, or maybe Pavel. Come on now, stop laughing. Maybe you can't see my genius, but I do have a fan base. Gotta head back to the forest for some more practice.
Well, that was kind of dark. It looks like our little lizard bro actually called in his own demise. Uh, our next fiend is going to be the gold element, which is going to be a small element creature in Jose. There he is right there. And, uh, yeah. Two years since I left. Wonder how the children are doing. Uh, here it'll be cold this year. Hope they can keep warm without mother. Two years ago, Sin was gone. Peace came to Spira. But in that winter, there was a great cold wave. Very bad time for Ronzo. No hunting game. Crops not grow. Soon I thought family will starve. So I leave family, go work. First year, I work in Bavel. Help rebuild town. Next year, work at Youth League Headquarters. Before, always there was work. All in Spira working to rebuild Spira. I work hard to rebuild Spira too. Send money to family. But one day, I am dead. Accident when working turn into Fiend. But Fiend is fine. Better than going to far play worrying about family. Want to see my children. They will not know this is father, but still want to see. Please take me to a mountain. Please. Now, personally, I feel like the red elemental would have done a better job there warming up those little Ronzo uh, cubs as opposed to the gold elemental. But I mean, who am I to say anything, right? Uh, but anyway, that is everybody for uh, for Jose. So next, we are going to be going to the Moon Flow, and the first fiend from the Moon Flow is going to be the the Takuba. Takuba. Uh, which is going to be a small slash medium uh, blade fiend. 
Uh, what's the idea of catching me up like this? The more time I waste here, the more business opportunities I miss out on. Time is money. Every second lost is a guild loss. Money, money, money. Now let me out. Phew, I've been yelling too long. What's that? I died and became a fiend? Now wait just a minute. No, I remember now. The ungrateful deadbeats I lent money to did me in. And when I died, they all danced on my grave. The nerve of those bums. Hey, listen. You all ride this fancy ship here. You must know how to get uh, me back to normal. Come on, help me out. I'll make it worth your while. How does a hundred gill sound? No way. You're killing me here. Uh, how's about we make it 150 then? Hey, are you listening? Go wings, my foot. Uh, what kind of sphere hunter team can't turn one? Or go wings, my foot. What kind of sphere hunter team can't turn one fiend back to normal? Uh, and you have the nerve to make me work for free? No way. I am starting your tab right now. Well guys, proof positive right there, never to mess with Shinra. You never know what's gonna happen to you. Uh, but anyway, our next fiend for the moon flow is gonna be this guy right here. Uh, the Ziphaconcus? The Ziphocytus? The Ziphocytus. However the heck you wanna pronounce this. Uh, he's gonna be a small slash medium dino fish. Uh, there are waters so deep that even the light of the many fireflies on the surface barely reach. I ride in those great depths, but I'm sorry to say there aren't many interesting tales from down there. Oh, but perhaps I could tell you uh, that story. The story of a young boy. Twas a summer day five years ago, or five years gone, on the banks of the moon flow. I noticed a small boy walking by the edge of the water as I traced the path down the shores. It was almost dusk and tears were rolling down his cheeks. I had a grandson about his age when I was human and I worried for him. But looking as I do, I would have only frightened him further if I had approached. Just as I turned my back to return from whence I came, the boy noticed me. Uh, where did I leave off? Oh, that's right, when the boy had saw me. The boy was not afraid of me, but he did keep crying. He said that he hadn't finished his summer project for school, and that classes were about to begin soon. So I decided to tell him the story of the fiend who, li who lived in the depths of the moon flow. The boy's eyes then suddenly lit up, and from that day forward he came to hear me tell my tale. By the time the summer break was over, he had finished a project uh, to bring back to school. Ah, oh, you want to hear more? Well, I'm sure the boy was praised for his interesting project. Although, I couldn't tell you for sure because he never came back to the riverbanks. I haven't seen the boy since. I'm a little sad in truth, but being with him made me remember my grandson. Hmm. Ah, sorry, my story is over. I'm getting on in years now. I've spent my last days in that place. Or I'll spend my last days in that place.
Now that is actually quite a sweet story right there. So uh, our final creature for the moon flow is going to be the large creature Shell Shocker. Yawn. This place is so cramped. Where am I? I'm so sleepy. Or I was sleeping so peacefully. Did you have to wake me up? Match? Arena? What a hassle. Do I really have to? Ugh, what? I'm not work again, but I just did some work. I forgot to tell you, I need three days of sleep for every one day of work. And so, bedtime. <sighs> Wake me up three days after you find my next opponent. Come on, this is fiend abuse. I was having such a great dream, too. Eating takes so much effort, so I don't want to burn too much energy. If I don't burn too much energy, then I can just stay asleep like this forever. What kind of dream was it? Why the best dream there, there is? A dream about sleeping. Now what is it? You're going to let me out of here. Really? Well, to be honest, I've gotten used to sleeping all cooped up in here. And so I really don't feel like moving. Do I have to get out? Uh, yes, buddy, you do. All right, so for completing that sleepy tale, uh, Shell Shocker enters the Battle of the Arena. And that is everybody for the Moon Flow, so next up is going to be Guadalajara. And we're going to start off Guadalajara with the uh, Flak Python here. Which uh, is actually a pretty good fiend for uh, Chapter 1, especially if you're able to get him uh, kind of up there in level. Uh, he, This one mixed with uh, the Recoil... Uh, can get a pretty decent chain going. Uh, but we're not using him, so I can't really show that off. Anyway, my life story, haha. <laughs> well, if I promise, or if you promise to keep it a secret, I chose to become a fiend. When I was human, I was the crack sniper of Spira's most feared assassin's guild. I was Spira's best shot. I never failed to fulfill a contract that I took on. Spare no time, spare no mercy, that was my motto. Some contracts I took when I was human, I still can't forget. Like three years ago in Bevel. It was a high monk who held a lot of power with Yevon. I targeted him after a speech, though he was surrounded by guards. It was quite a risky gamble. So what happened? Well, of course, I fulfilled the contract but I didn't escape unscathed. Uh, look, even in my fiend form, I still have the scar. 
I received that day. So why did I choose to become a fiend? It had to do with the juicy contract I got. The target is a individual of near immense power. At the time, it felt I had reached the limits of my skill, but failure is not an option in the guild. The only way I could improve my skill was to get a new body, the one you see before you right now. My body is now a gun, one which uh, never runs out of bullets. Quick draw, automatic fire, I can do anything. Now I've become the ultimate sniper. And now I have to go take care of that fat juicy contract. Let me just tell you this, I used to take great pride in my work. My whole... Whoa. My whole raison d'etre? I have no idea what that means. Uh, was to take on the really hard contracts and complete them. Not so much anymore though. The contract I was telling you about the other day, the target was you, Yuna. I pretended to, I pretended to join your team and bided my time. I had every opportunity, but I couldn't do it. This w has never happened to me before. I'm not, I'm not a sniper anymore. Just a coward. Shinra, do what you like with me. guys so that was the flak python who was an assassin uh, that couldn't pull his uh, final job and kind of got uh, caught up in that but anyway our next uh, fiend is going to be another small oh by the way the flak python as well as the recoil are small bandolier type enemies that are both found in Wado Salam I don't know if I said that for uh, the flak python but anyway uh, recoil here uh, have you come to help me, or do you just want to use me too? I'm so tired, nothing will come out right now, please just let me rest. Thank you for helping me, I ran away from a monk's manor in Bevel. My brother and I were captured in Bevel and shown off as sideshows for ages. Why? Because we brothers had a secret talent. For some reason, when we eat something, it turns into gill inside our bodies. For example, if I eat a potion, it will come back out as a thousand gil. The humans captured me, or the humans captured us, made us churn out gil constantly, and even turned us into a sideshow. 
My older brother ate everything they gave him, producing gill in amounts several times his own weight. How could they be so cruel? I'll never forgive those humans. My brother and I only ever had each other, and now I'm all alone. That's what I thought anyway, but now I've become friends with so many other fiends here. Everyone, please lend me your support. I want to avenge my brother. Well, alrighty then. It seems like uh, people should not be messing with uh, abilities and powers they do not understand. Anyway, our next uh, fiend, or I guess technically not a fiend, but our next creature is going to be the goon here, uh, which is going to be another small creature from Guadalajara uh, of the human variety. I am goon number one. I go by the name Red. I became a goon to protect Spira from the forces of evil. Each day I mount my Albed bike and sally forth wherever evil may lurk. In order to combat even greater evil, I seek to hone my skills in the arena. Train me well. Shinra analysis. My analysis has confirmed his true identity. He idolized heroes from a young age. His hero model used to be summoners, but now it's Sphere Hunters. He has applied to join the LeBlanc Syndicate, but he failed the entrance exam. His uniform is a phony. He gathers neighborhood kids to play pretend superhero with. He is always the leader. And he goes by the name Red.
that story is to be continued in chapter 2. Next up is going to be another small humanoid uh, target in Guadalajara, and that is going to be the Shigun. Let me brief you on my profile. I'm just your average goon. I clean up around the chateau, cook meals, that kind of thing. My, my hobby is dessert making. Things I'm proud of? Well, I was once voted number one goon I want to marry. They call me Pink. Gender analysis. Uh, she's now the former number one goon I want to marry. It appears younger goons have taken the spotlight away from her. Uh, she isn't asked out on dates anymore. Uh, her big hang-up is that her uniform is feeling tighter these days. A's age is unknown. And hers is another story that will be continued in Chapter 2. Uh, next up, uh, there are actually three more enemies that you can capture in Guadalajara here in Chapter 1. Unfortunately, you need New Game Plus to do it. Uh, they are all three small humanoid targets, and that is going to be Le LeBlanc, uh, Logos, and Orme. But because, again, because we not, are not in uh, New Game Plus, I cannot capture them. Anyway, next up is going to be the Thunder Plains, and we are going to be talking about uh, the Bicoquet, the Bicoquet, however you want to pronounce this guy's name. You guys are lucky, there aren't many Bicoquets in Spira that can cast Doom. Why the face? Don't believe me? Think I'm a liar, don't you? You want to see it? Ah, well I can't just show it off for nothing. Well, I guess it's uh, nice to keep you in suspense. Well, I guess it isn't nice to keep you in su suspense for too long. Uh. Just between us, back when I was a petty thief, I made a deal with the Angel of Death. I'll lend you my powers, go out and reap for me many human souls, is what he said. I gladly made the deal. I mean, I can just take out anyone I don't like, right? So I went wild, but one day I messed up and died, and my partners sealed my powers. But they forgot to send me to the far plane, the nerve of them. So anyway, I can't use Doom right now at the moment, but I'll get it back, I swear. I can feel it. The seal will be broken soon. I will have my powers back. I'll make my old associates pay for everything. Uh, I'll make my old associates pay for envying me and taking my power away.
Alright, well the story of his, or the moral of his story is uh, not to mess with powers that you do not fully understand. Anyway, our next fiend is uh, going to be the Lesser Drake, which is going to be a medium drake creature in uh, the Thunder Plains. Uh, this is so bad. If I waste time here, I won't be able to meet my quota. I can't be dilly-dallying like this. Please let me out, pretty please. My boss can be so scary. Hmm? What's my job, you ask? Well, it's actually sort of confidential, but... I guess in a world... I guess in a word, I'm a salesman. You know Machina, right? Our company deals in sales and rentals. Uh, we salesmen travel around trying to get new contracts. How about one for the Gold Wings, eh? Machines can be so very useful. What's that? You say you can just catch us fiends and make us work for you instead? Uh, this is so bad. Uh, you're a competitor. You're like a rival company. If the boss finds out I've been headhunted by the Gold Wings, rawr! What? Who is my boss, you ask? Oh no, I, can <coughs> I can't tell you that. That would be very, very bad. It's top secret, confidential, hush hush. I'm telling you nothing. But just between us, at this rate, it won't be long before my boss makes it to the top. And who is that, you ask again? Come on, I told you, I can't say. Line up. Alright, so it looks like Ren is uh, getting into a new line of business. Anyway, our uh, next fiend is going to be Ocho here. Uh, who is going to be a large creature from the Thunder Plains. It appears beauty and luck don't go hand in hand. I died just as things were looking up. Then I thought I would look for romance in the far plain. But then I find that I've become a fiend. And a hideous fiend at that. I'm sure they are responsible for this. They envied my beauty. But it's not their fault. It's not their fault they were ugly. It was my fault for being so beautiful. Beautiful is such a sin. Or beauty is such a sin. I was a star dancer at Tobley stage. More beautiful, more skilled than all the other dancers. My, st my smile after... A lavish performance stole the hearts of the crowd. You are too shabby yourself, High Summoner, but a word of advice if I may. Try to have more confidence in yourself. If you could do that, you'll blossom even more. Yes, I was popular, but that also meant I had many enemies. The top dancer before me, for example, for example must have despised me for stealing the spotlight. But she should actually be grateful to me, because I made her realize how ugly she really was. Now I realize she must have been the one who poisoned my drink. But that's okay. You see, I was too beautiful to live a long life anyway. The moon lilies that grow on the banks of the moon flow are so precious, don't you agree? One legend tells of a 
of the spirits who of the spirits of those who died tragically making their way here and becoming flowers. I've made up my mind. I'm not going to the far plane just yet. I'll stay here and become a and become the moon flows. No, I'll become the most beautiful flower in Spira, enchanting all who gaze upon me. Alright guys, so that is it for uh, the Thunder Plains for now. In uh, the next video, I uh, go over a uh, couple of things needed to get the last fiend needed for the Thunder Plains. Uh, but for now, that is it. And uh, we're going to be moving on to uh, Makalania. And the only fiend that we're going to be getting right now is the Amorphous Gel, which is a medium creature. Water, huh? What? What? Where am I? Who am I? Oh, that's right. I went looking for water, but it was. But I was attacked by fiends, and now I'm a fiend. I have to get back to my parents and my sisters. I'm the son of a Beaconel merchant. Our family runs a caravan that goes around to camps, but we got lost in the desert. 
That day, we loaded up the shoe puffs and headed out across the desert as usual. At high noon, it suddenly got dark, and a big sandstorm approached. We frantically tried to escape, but the storm came at us so fast and swallowed us up in, in an instant. My father held me and the bigger of my younger sisters and dove into the sand. After that, I just remember it being completely dark and I could only hear the rumbling of the storm. After the storm passed, though, we stuck our heads out of the sand and saw that we were completely lost. The compass was ruined by sand and the storm removed all the markers in the desert. And worst of all, the storm somehow took our precious water supply. Water supply. You know how horrifying it is to have no water in the desert, right? We were... So we started looking for an oasis, but there were none to be found. My small sister was the first to become unable to move, then my other sister, then my mother. The sun continued to glare down upon us without mercy. I needed to find water while I was still able to move. I decided to search alone. On wobbly feet, I left the caravan and my family, but I was soon attacked by fiends. Even as we speak, my family may be, please, please, find them, help them. Alright, so also in the Makalania wood, uh, we have uh, these two right here, the uh, the high Z and the deep high Z. But again, uh, we go over that in the next episode, uh, so I'm not really going to worry about them right now. Uh, but next up is going to be the Beaconel Desert. And other than uh, the Killer Hound, which again we're going to be going over in the next episode, we have the Bolt Drake. Which, if I could find him, right here, is going to be a medium drink sized creature. Ha! I did it! I kidnapped them! Three of them! At that! I had my eye on that house for a long time. I just threw the kids in the sack and ran. That young mother must be looking around for her kids right now. I wonder how much ransom I can get out of her. Huh, I'm going to make a fortune. 
Now that I look at them, these siblings look nothing alike. No resemblance to that pretty mother either. Uh, are these kids really siblings? Ow, ow, ow! These brats are shooting their needles at me. And now they're... They see me... And now, they see me mad and just stand there with their mouths gaping open. Do they even understand that they've been kidnapped? Man, talk about hyperactive kids. God, they keep uh, pricking me. What did I do to, to deserve this? Did I pick a dud here? I have to return these kids to their mother before they do me in. So I feel like it's supposed to be a surprise that Lulu's dolls are sentient, but I mean, if you pay attention in the first game, it does not take that long at all before you realize that they're able to move around and do a bunch of stuff, so I don't know. Anyway, our next fiend is going to be this guy right here, the Himruther, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that any more than that. Um, he is a medium ogre creature in Beaconel Desert. And, uh, don't even think about calling me Harry. I'm in search of legendary underwear. I've heard the tale that whoever acquires a legendary underwear will have hitherto untold power. It's a tale handed down from generation to generation. I'll bet you want to find them now, don't ya? I found some appealing underwear. A chimera in, in Thunder Plains was wearing them. Uh, you could barely call it a battle. Once Machina was over, the underwear was mine. Charcoal leopard print sheen made of cotton. A bit smaller than I'd like, but the tight fit is beyond compare. Such breathable fabric too. Get some more fancy underpants. This pair I took from a Tomberry on the Mushroom Rock Road. The battle? Decent, I guess. Of course I won. No problem. Just ignore the scratches on my face. Red and white stripes fabric is silk? Perhaps a little on the large side, but that's fine. Never know when you might put on a few pounds. Hand wash only, though. I suppose that's the fate of high-class fabric. I finally found the owner of the legendary underwear. He's one of my kind, looking for underwear like me. It was quite a battle. We were evenly matched. His fists were machine guns, but my arms of steel blocked every blow. For three days and nights we fought. It was a struggle for the ages, but I emerged victorious. A black and yellow tiger print made of fur. A perfect fit. It itches a little, but come on, tiger print. It brings out the ferocity within me. How'd I get him? Easy. I just made him want to change out of them. Smart, wouldn't you say? But are they really legendary? They're itchy, and what's this? A scrap of paper. Unbelievable. It's a memo with the location of the true legendary underwear.
Well, after that little disturbing romp for the forest, uh, you will actually get that guy in the Fiend Arena. Uh, I forget exactly what his team name is, but I mean, he's an ogre, so not that difficult. Let's see. Up next, we have the zoo, if I can find him. There he is. Uh, this is going to be a large fiend in the Beaconel Desert, of course. I used to be a treasure hunter and adventurer travel, traveling around Spira in search of riches. My goal was to obtain hidden treasure never before seen in our time. I set off when I heard a rumor that legendary ruins, ruins appeared when the clouds over Gagazette cleared up. But alas, right as the treasure was within my grasp, something happened to me. So Yuna, I would ask a favor. Would you seek out the treasure in my place? I'll remember the way somehow. Come now, adventure awaits. Now, now, the adventure has just begun. Lighting a lamp in a cave in Gagazette revealed a shining prismatic stone reflecting on water rising from the ground. Uh, but there was no time for sightseeing. I had run low on rations and had to press forward. I continued on, praying that I would reach the summit safe. We've reached the middle of the adventure. Somehow, I had made it thus far. Many, many faith had supposedly resided in the, in the towering cliffs. Now they just tower solemnly in the sky. As I climbed ever higher, I discovered a, a hot spring. Resting my weary legs was an unexpected delight. I was fully recharged and ready to go, so onwards and upwards. The adventure is almost at its end. Uh, making my way through the dense fog, I finally arrived at the ruins. I continued on the path to the treasure. I could feel it close by, but something happened right here. Something that ended my life and turned me into a fiend. So, Yuna, I had thought to ask you to continue my quest, but I have realized that this is, in the end, my adventure. Let me be the one that finished it. I can feel that treasure waiting for me.
All right, and I unfortunately cannot remember off the top of my head what treasure we got there, but we do end up getting a treasure. Uh, so, woohoo! We helped a zoo and got a treasure. Very nice. Uh, but that is going to be it for Beaconel. Up next is going to be the Calm Lands. And our first fiend is going to be this guy right here, uh, which is going to be a small evil eye, uh, the Araman. Shinra, look, look, isn't my eye really, really big? I can see really, really far away. My eye is my greatest asset. Shinra, my eye hurts. Maybe some dust got in there since it's so big? It's been hurting for a long time. I've been crying my eye out. My eye still hurts so much. I wonder if I'll end up going blind. Nobody believes me, but it really, 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 really hurts. Only the old man I met before has believed me. I asked if I did something wrong. He said, no, you should blame humans. Shinra analysis. Yeah, whatever that means. Alright guys, so after that eyeball cleaning, our uh, next fiend is going to be the Nash Horn here. Which is going to be a small slash medium uh, dual horn type creature. Well, that was no fun, let me tell you. If you hadn't picked me up, I'd still be wandering around Spira. Thanks a lot for the help, but I have to say that IT was really terrifying. It was one of the young ones that picked IT up. Uh, when you touch it, there's a bright blue light and it cures all injuries. Uh, people went wild. Huh, well, I for one never bought into it. But it turned out the rumors were true. A frail old man touched it and became healthy as a man half his age. So when I got injured, I was inclined to go touch it. A line had already formed in front of it. I had to wait two hours for my turn. Finally, I thought I'd s I could say goodbye to the pain. I put my hand forward, then suddenly, there was a huge sound and I was blown sky high into the air. My last memory was of it melting into the blue light. Next thing I know, I'm at the peak of Mount Gagazet. Give me a break already.
All right, well, it looks like that Nashhorn has had some uh, interesting experiences with uh, Save Spear 2. Uh, and our last creature for the Calm Lands is actually going to be the Adamantoids right here, which of course is going to be a large creature. Personal log. Not a cloud in the sky today. It's been a week since we set sail from Kilika. Plan to buy a coral necklace for my life for... for whoa. Plan to buy a coral necklace for my wife in Besaid. Uh, she will love it. Uh, what should I get for my son? Personal log. The winds are a bit stronger today. With our holes filled with Besaid cargo, we set sail back to Kilika. Even after ye years of sailing, I still feel slightly anxious when leaving dry land. But that feeling is quickly replaced by excitement for the next journey. Or to feel or to see my family again. Personal log. Such heavy rain. In all my years, I have not seen a storm this bad. How long since we lost control of the ship? I do not even know what direction we are going in. They say that sin appears during storms like this. We might get through it. We must get through it quickly. Personal log. A fierce storm has taken out the lamp in my cabin. I write this final log entry under the light of a single candle I have left. The ship is listing. The water is coming in from everywhere. It is only a matter of time before we sink. We have decided to put our fate in the hands of the ship. The Adamantoys. We must need a miracle. Shinra analysis. That's as far as I've been able to decipher. Alright, so at the very least, at least the Adamant Toys was able to uh, complete its journey and uh, make it home uh, for whatever that's worth. Uh, but our next fiend is going to be the White Fang here. He is going to be our first fiend for Mount Gagazet. And he, of course, is going to be a small wolf creature. Have I told you the sad tale of how my brother is frozen solid in a block of ice? I don't even know if he's dead or alive. But no, there's no way he kicked the bucket. We were born and raised in Gagazet ice. It's just a plaything to us. I'll never forget that cursed night. I know he's waiting for me. Let me get stronger so I can rescue him. My, my brother and I grew up in the snowy peaks of Gagazet. It's craggy precipices and deep snow banks. Uh, made it inhospitable for all but the toughest of creatures. I remember fringe wintry, refrigerant wintry nights when we would huddle in a cave waiting for a blizzard to let up. We were always together, my brother and I. Five years ago, at the age of 20, I engaged in my rites of adulthood. We go alone to the mountain's crest and bathe in the morning sunlight that is how we become adults. This holy ritual we dedicate to the faith must be done alone. I followed this rule as I set out on my journey. As I made my way to the summit in the dead of night, a snowstorm grew. Wait, 
the snowstorm grew even fiercer. This was the first time I had ever faced such biting cold. My legs could barely move and I began to drift off. And that's when my brother came to me. He had been following me. He quickly huddled to in, we quickly huddled to endure the cold. And then morning came. As I opened my eyes, I saw my brother had been completely encased in ice. He was not yet of age. Surely I it was the divine punishment of the faith for breaking our sacred ritual. No matter what I did, the ice did not melt, but I know in my heart my brother is still alive in there. Five years have passed, and my brother would now be twenty. I plan to take on the right once more. With him. So after that heartwarming tale of melting ice and brotherly uh, rites of passage, uh, they actually do join the Fiend Arena. I believe their team is called the uh, the Silver Brothers. And yeah, our next fiend that we uh, need to capture is going to be a small elemental uh, from Gagazette. If I can find the elemental page. Yeah, come on. There it is. It is actually the yellow elemental that does not actually have a story, so uh, once you capture him, uh, you could basically release him right away. And after him is going to be the bomb, uh, which is going to be a medium bomb type creature. Hey, do you like Blitzball? What team? I'm a fan of the Besaid Orox. They used to be not that good, but these days, they're championship contenders. Yeah, the Luka Goers are a good team, but you should keep your eye on the Orox too. I mean, once we join the Orox, the Goers won't stand a chance. That's right, when I grow up, I'm going to be a Blitzball player. With the Orox, of course. Did you see Captain Waka's retirement match two years ago? That's when we decided to be players. Oh, I actually have this partner who I team very well with. We would practice on Besaid's beaches until dusk. We vowed to join the Aurochs together. I wonder how he's doing. I mean, I'm a fiend now, but I hope he's still training. He was really shy, you know? He wasn't good at mingling, so he'd just stand around all by himself. So I went over to him and said, let's blitz. I mean, we were just sort of pretending or pretend playing, but but when he shot the ball, everybody just watched in awe. When he tries, he's really good, you know? After that, he and I became the golden duo. No one in Besay was able to stop us. One time, we even scored a goal off Keepa. 
Hey, I heard my old partner hasn't been practicing lately. He's always just staring out at the ocean. I guess he can't get into a groove without me around. Well then, I guess it's time for a Golden Duo Reunion. So, if I am to understand that particular story correctly, uh, somehow a lost blitz ball turned into a fiend? That doesn't quite make sense to me, but I mean, I, I, I guess, I mean, a f rose turned into another fiend, I mean, why not a blitz ball? Anyway, our last fiend for Mount Gagazette is going to be the large creature of Chorus, uh, which is a fiend that we fought uh, in the story. Or, depending on where I put this in the timeline of videos, we are going to fight in the story. Uh, but, Gua, help me, an iron giant is coming. Oh no, the pain. This might be the end of me. Help me. Oh. Ah, you fell for it. You humans are so gullible. Don't believe all that you hear. Gak, please help. It's a bomb. It's getting bigger and bigger by the second. If it explodes, I, 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 I don't know what we could do. Oh man, I did it again. I got you again. I can't believe you fell for it twice. You need to be more skeptical. You gotta save me. I mean, this time th th there's a Tomberry right over here. I mean, I do have a Tomberry. Uh, He's got a huge knife. He's going to slice me in two. Hurry up and prepare for battle. You've had enough. Oh boy. The look on your face is priceless. This is great. Hmm. You're angry with me? I'm sorry. I laughed at you. Okay. I won't do it again. Just please don't abandon me. If you do, I'll wither and die. Got, got you again. I have put on a serious act. And you're all so hooked in. You don't learn, do you? When people are this gullible, it's almost no fun. That's not what I meant to do. I need to release you.
All right, so after the saving of Boris, uh, Shinra gained a little bit of respect from that guy. Uh, but anyway, uh, so that is going to be it for Mount Gagazet, and we are going to be moving on to Xanarkin. And our first fiend is going to be the small elemental, uh, which is the white elemental. It's cold, dark, someone let me out of here. I don't want to die like this, Shinra analysis. I'm not sure what it's, what it's going on about. I can hardly breathe, almost out of air. This is all your fault. Uh, you're the one who said we should go back for the treasure. What? Well, you followed, didn't you? Stop, we're running out of air. Shinra analysis. There's more than one in there. Pray. Stop fighting and pray. Pray to what? The faith are gone. We. How can you be so blasphemous? They may have left, but they are always watching over us. It's starting to come past my ankles. The temple is sinking. Shinra analysis. I think I get it now. I wonder if my wife and child are safe. Shouldn't. Or shouldn't a rescue party have come by now? Stop, stop. There's no use in waiting. The faith have truly abandoned us. Shinra analysis. Analysis complete. Uh, they're the souls of those left behind at Makalania Temple. So glad we were able to uh, help out the tortured souls of those, uh, what do you call them, priests there. But anyway, our uh, next fiend is going to be the Anole right here, which is a small reptile type creature. Huh? I've been caught? Oh no, that's just no good. Let me loose, quickly, okay? I'm looking for someone and I can't be wasting time here. Sai Shinra, do you do you know what it's like to yearn for someone? I guess it's a little soon for you. I've been in love for a for a long time. Our meeting was sudden, but I knew the moment our eyes met it was true love. Wouldn't you call it destiny? I fell in love before I took this form. Back then I used to party in Kilika all night long. Even that day, I was wandering around the port when all of a sudden, a giant wave came in. It was Sin. I was about to be swallowed by the wave when he saved me. Shinra, guess what? I remember now. You know the promise I made with him back then? We promised that if we survived, we'd meet again at the bridge in Kilika. But in the end, I didn't make it. Though, I didn't make it through the attack. That's why I look like this now. But I still can't forget about him. I know that it can't work anymore, but I still love him. If I go back to that place, will he still be waiting for me?
So the uh, model that they use for the uh, female form of that gecko, uh, can somebody tell me where in the first game that, uh, that model was used? Because uh, I honestly do not remember it. At all. Uh, but anyway, our uh, next fiend is going to be the gecko up here, which is again going to be a small reptile type creature. What is it? What do you want? I'm kind of short on time. Let's make this snappy. I'm really in a bad mood right now. I forgot something. Something really important, I think. God, what is it? What was I doing? I forget. Ah, this is all your fault. You again? God, shoot. Annoying. I forgot again. Hey, hey, wh what's the big idea, huh? I was in a hurry. I was desperate. Uh, I was in the middle of something. Ah. Huh? I'm sorry to remember a little. Boing? Boing? Huh? What, what am I doing? Oh yeah, I was taking a deep breath. How is... Boing. Taking a deep breath. I don't know. Hmm. What's with this boing? Uh... What? It's some relaxing technique. That's weird. Hey boss! Hey boss! I remember! This rhyme! I remember! Work slowly, slowly is the way. So we only have one more creature to go over in this episode, and that is going to be, if I can find him, I feel like I passed him. Where are you? I know you're here somewhere. Yamma. Yeah, there he is. That is going to be the behemoth. Uh, and before we start this, I think that I forgot to mention that in Mount Gagazette, uh, if you are in New Game Plus and you put down a uh, humanoid uh, special trap pod, you can also get Kamari. 
Uh, so just want to point that out before we go ahead and get Behemoth here. Which of course is going to be a large creature. I have just a small dream to sell balloons. Don't laugh. I've never had much in the way of friends. So I figure maybe if I sell balloons I can make some friends. So I'm going to train to become the best balloon seller I can be. Some bombs from Kilika uh, brought me a bunch of balloons today. Red, orange, blue, large and small. One of the older bombs has been selling balloons for 20 years. He was kind enough to give me some advice. He told me each balloon stays afloat for a different number of days. The Machina in the desert helped me dig up a pump to put gas into the balloons. Uh, they just shrugged off the heat like it was nothing. You can always count on them. They didn't seem to be scared of me, but I don't think they shared my enthusiasm either. Be that as it may, it's thanks to them I got this pump and am one step closer to my dream. The high pillow taught me how to properly insert gas into the balloons. It's harder than it looks. Speedy like dispatching a foe. Uh, sweetly like wooing a girl. Something like that. Before I left, they showed me the high pillow dance. A little creepy, but I suppose it had its charm. I admit, Spira is full of all types. I've come a long way, but there's still something that's worrying me. Yeah, looking like I do, I don't think, or I think I might scare customers away. Ah, it's, it's, a, it's possible, Behemoth, buddy. Alright everybody, so that is every fiend that uh, we can get in chapter one and uh, their stories and all of that good stuff uh, except for five of them which uh, we are going to be going over in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for joining me and uh, until we uh, make it into that next episode, this is Famine52 signing out and peace out.